S&P was, was within striking distance of 3K, but since the release of that stronger-than-expected June jobs number on Friday, stocks have fallen on dampened hopes of a Fed rate cut. As the chairman prepares to testify on the Hill later this week, the president ramps up his criticism of the Fed over the weekend. Take a listen. Market still says 100% chance of a cut at the end of this month, guys. Yeah, I think uh, Morgan Stanley has a piece saying they baked in 50 basis points. I don't think it's even, I don't even know if they're going to cut. But that number of Friday was really good. I mean, it was just a very solid job number. Uh, and one of the things I think that we aren't even commenting on, how many times have we had to say the Fed is, their job is not to try to get stocks up? We have a president who's basically saying, hey, what's with the Fed? We need a dial of 10,000. You know, the, the, so many things are remarkable about what's being said in the White House. They hear but just kind of our eyes glaze over. There would have been a moment where all we would have talked about today is how long is this man in the White House? Uh, but instead, we just say, yeah, Dale, 10, Well, 000. by the way, he said virtually the same thing in a tweet a number of weeks ago and, and many times since then in terms of how much he believes the Fed policy has cost, and clearly in terms of what he watches very closely, that being the president, which is the Dow. Right. Statistically Was he upset about the Verizon downgrade? The no, Verizon I, don't, downgrade? I don't know that he was upset about that, although he is a little bit focused on 5G. We're going to get to, I want to talk a bit about I'm the, glad because the there's some notes about pricing. The emerging wireless world and whether it's going to be a good one for investors or not. But as for the market overall, Jim, after that number on Friday, what do we do? Well, look, I think that's, I don't like this Morgan Stanley downgrade, which is basically... On global equities. Yes, yeah. which is basically, look, you really should... You know, bad news is bad news. Because it read as if it was written on July 2nd. I mean, you know, the idea that we could have good growth in jobs, and I know jobs, that's lagging indicator, does at least make it look like that he should wait, that j Powell should wait. There's nothing wrong with waiting. I mean, they, they have press conferences every time now. I mean, you could just wait. You could, saying you just keep keep getting that kind of withering criticism but from you know, the chief executive. If, if he goes any closer to that helicopter, you won't be able to have to hear a thing. <laughs> the, True. This right? is very yeah, audio about. mix near the blade, the rotors is Morristown tough. address. You know, uh, like Gettysburg address, Morristown address. Jim is referring to this Morgan Stanley note that basically is taking their global equity allocation to a five-year low. Oh. They say earnings estimates for the rest of the year are still too high. Bond markets painting a gloomy picture on global growth. PMIs have gone negative, right? Well, look, I mean, you know, some of the data, the, ma the macro data is not that great. But when you start drilling down on individual companies, we continue to get some very good numbers. And it's very difficult, with the exception of the paper companies and the chemical companies, to find companies that are really disappointing. Now, there's a downgrade today of American Airlines. American Airlines got its own problems. Boeing, uh, people are commenting. Boeing certainly has its own problems. But we've had a number of IPOs. My biggest worry is that we have so many IPOs that are trading as a multiple of sales, but that's not the essence of these calls. These essence of the calls are that, that say that, that Pepsi's gonna miss tomorrow, and Pepsi's up uh, 20 points very quickly off of the 10, and you could say off the tenure. I just don't see a, a lot of ConAgra's, ConAgra being a company that clearly did miss. Yes. I don't see a lot You don't of see those. that? No. So does that mean you're Buying here on these record highs? Well, I just think that if you look at Kohl's, all right, now there's an article today uh, about Kohl's. It's in the USA Today. They lead with it. It's about uh, you can return things now to 1,100 stores. And, and you look at Kohl's, and it's at nine times earnings. You just say, okay, well, look, nine times earnings, is that really dangerous? But then we have companies uh, that are Okta, Zscaler, Zendesk, uh, Page Duty. Page Duty, have you seen that? Yeah. I mean, it's a very good company, ServiceNow. Right. I mean, these are selling at it, 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 no, I'm not saying insane multiples, but their pricing is if there's a lot of new money coming into the market. Yet the FT says, the Bear Times says that there's money coming out of the market. So I, I would never mind a strategist who just says, 
we can't handle that many more IPOs that are selling at eight to ten times tw- times sales. Sales. That's what I'm worried about. But that is not the essence of a downgrade of the semiconductor capital equipment stocks by Davidson, which are not that expensive. Micron reports. Micron was at three times earnings. It said that they were going to push out the, the turn in DRAMs, and the stock went up. So, I mean, I think that there's two markets. There's the not expensive market uh, where there's been some, some hiccups. Uh, Kohl's, J, uh, Nordstrom downgraded to sell this week. And then there's a really expensive market. No one's really even talking about the really expensive market, which is every one of these deals. Almost all of them have good revenues. And I don't like the 1999. There was a good discussion about the 1999 previous show, which is that those companies had no reps. There's big reps. So or you, big you know, revenues. Or even in some cases, actual hopes for cash flow or for cash flow. Chewy's real. Yeah. You know, Pets.com CEO, Wayne Wright, why that was obviously a disaster. Real, real is real. It's real, real, real David. Real. Real, 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 real is Get real. Get real, yeah. David. Real, real is real. Um, really quickly, uh, Bernstein, Saganaki's got a note about things being expensive. He says right. tech at 21.4 t- uh, times is higher, more expensive than it's been for the past 15 years. He's not saying short tech, but you need to start separating what's expensive in tech and what's not. And that's what I agree with. I mean, Tony, I think that's a very reasonable piece. There, we keep bringing these companies public, and we, and we, with the exception, of course, of Lyft, Alibaba, you know, the idea that maybe... I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Uber. Uh, Uber, that you know, you're looking at, at companies that are Amazon-like, and those are expensive. Anything that is, am- like Shopify is a company I like very much, talking about how that is a winner, all right? Uh, talking about an Alibaba winner, an Etsy winner, a Square winner. There's a piece this morning by Lisa Ellis talking about Squares possibly being a winner because of their, uh, their Venmo-like product. So, I mean, we've got these companies that people are... Dave, are you going to talk about towers later, I hope? Well, we, you and I talked about it on, uh, what day was that? Wednesday, Those are right? expensive. Yeah. Expensive stocks. Yeah, they are. So, I mean, against them, I, we've got the banks, 12 times earnings, a lot of retailers, 9, 10. So, I, I, I find that the Saginaw call really makes sense. But nobody has research on all the companies that have come public in the last four weeks. And they are so loved. I mean, today, CrowdStrike. Yep. I mean, everybody loves CrowdStrike. I defy people to tell me what CrowdStrike does. David? Uh, cybersecurity. Wow. Yeah. But then again, Symantec, I think, is going to get a $28 bid from Broadcom. Yes, it very well may. Well, you say 28. I don't want, sorry. I don't today know what the number's going to be. They should hold trading. We don't know what the It's crazy. It's gonna crazy. Be. But uh, I, I, I they hope I, to reach a deal with but them the next week. Cross strikes are expensive, they just, but they have revenues. Yes. And they that's do. the difference between 1999, where right. you had lots of companies that had no revenue. 